In terms of stunt rigging, it's a way to create the illusion that someone's flying or that someone's been, uh, you know, blasted back back through an explosion or creating an illusion of uh, someone, you know, levitating or hovering or so. Yeah, I mean, rigging, stunt rigging particularly has there's a lot of um, meanings to the word, I guess. There's a lot of different applications to what stunt rigging is. So it's a it's a bit of everything, really. I always wanted to do stunts when I was at school and then uh, I, lost, uh, I left school and then you know, I, had, I went down a different path. I ended up studying to be an arborist. So I studied arboriculture, um, nearly a horticulture and arboriculture for four years. And then leading on from that, I, you know, like getting into climbing trees, I got into climbing rocks and then mountains and, and spent a lot of time sort of toing and froing, you know, between those disciplines. And then when I eventually thought oh, yeah, I should go and be a stuntman, which is what I wanted to do when I left school, I um, kind of walked into the industry at a really cool time where the matrix had just come out. You know, it was all about the wire work and it was all sort of new in Western film. So it, it was something that I always was interested in, but I just kind of like it just came naturally for me to be able to, you know, tie knots and rig people and, and understand loads and masses and directions and how to rig things to make things happen. So, you know, I just kind of fell into it, I guess. I see it as a way to add a dimension. And I, I've always really enjoyed the result of uh, adding, you know, putting, putting a, a rigging evolution into a film you know, enables us to move a performer, an actor, to A to B in a different way, to exacerbate an explosion, to show off a superpower. So for me, it's like, it, it is, it's a very cool creative tool to be able to take someone off the ground and put them into space and then be able to move them around the camera or the camera around them. I always look at it as it's filling the interspaces of the screen. You know, if you're looking at a movie, you know, you're sitting at a, at a watching a flat screen at the cinema and people are walking around, it's a very dimensional thing to understand. But as soon as you lift someone into an interspace between the ground and the clouds or between the ground and a building, it, it just adds that dimension. It's like adding atmosphere to a to a shot, you can have a shot with no atmos, meaning no smoke. And then as soon as you put an atmos in there, you're filling the interspace of the, the, the screen. And I think it's a really, it's the same thing. It's, it's taking the performer and, and, and giving the audience a different dimension to look at them, basically. There's such a variety of, of disciplines in the rigging world for stunts. So, yeah, I guess you, you get a lot of the sort of, you know, I don't want to call them generic, but you get a lot of uh, very simple wire work, which is doing ratchets with people, you know, gunshots, explosions, a lot of decel rigs, which a decel rig is someone jumping off a building to the ground or <coughs> over a railing onto the ground. They're probably the, the, the most common type of work because it's always something jumping over something. And that doesn't have to be a superhero. It could be anyone jumping over a bridge onto a truck or jumping from, you know, off a balcony onto a vehicle or the ground. So those sort of rigs are fairly commonplace. Uh, even in saying that, they're also usually the ones that catch out because they're so simple. So, you know, those sort of things are pretty common, which is cool, you know, nice and nice and easy. But I, you know, I do thrive on, on things that are really stressful and hard and uh, make, you, make you sort of chew on your thoughts, you know, so you can... You have to you have to use your brain to work it out and and uh, work on your intuition to have a gut vibe to to you know be confident enough to say this is what we're going to do we're going to have these cranes and this thing and you know put your put your money where your mouth is sort of thing as I, and I kind of enjoy that side of the work most of Fury Road was like that Casino Royale was like that you know where it's kind of like this is how we're going to do it and and then you go away and you you kind of think very carefully about what you just said to a lot of people that are going to pay a lot of money to go on what you just said. So, you know, that, that, that kind of comes with experience that you, you know, I always used to worry about, 
oh, you know, it's going to cost too much or I don't know if I ask for a big crane and it doesn't work, what will happen? You know, but, I, you know, after a while I was like, I dropped all that and I'm like, oh, if I've got a, an intuitive feeling something's going to work and, the, and, you, and you need those resources and if they're willing to pay for it, then jump on it and go for it and, you know, enjoy it and enjoy the stress and enjoy the result and keep people safe and it's, uh, it's pretty satisfying. Yeah, that, that's a good question. I suppose once you do understand what the, you know, what the script or the storyboards or the director is after, you know, my, my first thoughts always gravitate towards, yeah, that's my dogs in the background. Sorry about that. The first thing I always think about is, is okay, this is, this is what they're after. I, I, I get an inkling of how, how to achieve that action using, using rigging, but then my, my very first thoughts would always go to, okay, I can create something. How do I keep the performer safe first? You know, it's easy to create a huge flying system and take someone really fast from A to B and, you know, skim them past something really close or whatever, but it, it's all, that's all well and good. But if you can't manage the risk of something like that, then it becomes, it becomes dangerous and you're flying by the seat of your pants. Performer safety first. The results, the results are nice bonus, I guess, you know, at the end of the day. I always make them feel as insecure as possible. No, no, not really. I, I, you know, the, the key to that is a, it's a great question because, because they're all different and they've all had different experiences working on films that you might not know what they've been through if they've worked on other productions that have had rigging and wire work and intensive stunt play. You don't tread cautiously because they're, they're you know, an A-grade actor or whatever they are. You tread cautiously because you've got to be mindful of, you don't know their past experiences. You don't know necessarily if they've got a fear of heights or a fear of, you know, the thing that they've got to do. They might be worried about how do I perform and I'm in something like this. So, you know, I always make sure that, for me to gain their trust, it's not explaining how safe this rigging system is because really they don't, they don't really want to know. You know, they don't have the brain space to listen to the, I use this tech and it's just got to splice in it with this funny shackle thing. It, really it's about building rapport with the actor or the actress and, and, and gaining their confidence by, by rapport, you know, having a rapport with them that you can get along with that person and make them feel comfortable with you. And then as you do that, then it's a progression of, of introducing them to the action that they've got to do and having their stunt double do the action first so they can see what it is and, and, and you know, explaining you're going from A to B and this is your stunt person, this is your stunt double that's doing it for you if that's the case and they get to see it or if, that, if that's not the case, then you step progress them to go, what we'll do is we'll go from here to here to get you comfortable with what you're doing and, and all these lads can get comfortable with you and you can get comfortable with them and then we go from here to here and then progressively the gag gets bigger if that's the case uh, and then the, you get the result. But it's more about having a good personal relationship with that person um, or, not, you know, sort of a relationship with them where they, you know, you've just got their trust basically, which is really important because if you can't get along with them, they're not going to trust you instinctively. Mad Max was a was just one gigantic stunt movie, stunt chase with people moving around on vehicles. So obviously having a superb team to work with is probably the first port of call that, you know, no one's good enough to do everything by themselves and it's a collective to get everything achieved and done like we did on that film. But to sort of speak collectively for the team, we would we would bite off chunks of work and um, you know, even though sort of I was predominantly, you know, designing the rigs, you, you, you sort of, you come up with an idea, then you spit it out to the team and the team dissect it and they go, oh, what about this? What about that? Maybe we should do it this way or maybe have you thought of this? So, so from those sort of conversations, things morph and grow into what they are. And, you know, for that film, it was like, a, it was like playing leapfrog every day with multiple things happening simultaneously on two different units all the time so it was a 
it's a it's one of those things where you, you have to be working on one system and and thinking and mulling over the next system and and maybe even you know what you're doing at this at the time may have some relevance to the next thing that you have to rig so you can be kind of taking from taking from this and giving it to that and 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 so this you know it does become like a a big melting pot of ideas between the team and the rigs that you're doing at the time because on a show like that the more you do the more creative you become and when you're so absorbed and so in the fury road in the in the machine of making the film then you know the rest of the world drops away and all that's there is what you've got to do so it's it is an interesting process and i i look at it still and i go i don't know how we really did it to tell you the truth <laughs> I looked at the film the first time I saw the film I was horrified I was like my god how did we not how did we not kill people on this thing but you know when you're in it you you you're so in it that you don't really you know you don't think of anything else other than what you've got to do I guess uh, I met uh Lana on Matrix 2 and 3 uh so I spent 11 months on the, on that film working with them so that, i mean that was just a great experience i mean working on the matrix was literally like being in the matrix for 11 months and again it was one of those films where you get so absorbed into the environment that you know you you actually do enter the matrix and you enter zion and you live there for so many months so when you work on a film for that long you it's it's inevitable that you build good relationships or close relationships with people especially when you work with them so closely so you know of lana is you know i went back and i did uh the this sort of concept work for jupiter ascending with lana back uh oh well, jesus a few years ago now eight years ago which was fantastic experience and then uh last year going back to do matrix 4 in san francisco with lana which is a an amazing amazing creative person that you just wish you could tap into and uh, and have some of that creativity because it's pretty outstanding. That was back in the day when I was hitting the ground and falling over and getting punched and kicked. So, yeah, working as a stunt performer and then also Matrix 2 and 3 for me was a was a great platform uh to learn more about rigging and I'd only been in the industry a couple of years by that stage, so it was like a turbocharged uh work experience to you know into wire work and working with Wu Ping and his wire team to see how you know eastern culture does wire work and and sort of pick up the you know the trade from from how they started the whole the whole wire work in film off so you know feel it's a great privilege to be able to witness that and and spend so much time absorbed in it seeing how how they do things and then and then from where it's gone from there is it's a pretty amazing experience and right up until what we did on you know matrix 4 taking wire work and rigging to the next level and the last scene of the trailer is is a rigging sequence that I was involved with in San Francisco with a, an amazing team of people and and uh, I can't wait to see it it was pretty cool it's an amazing amazing gag and you know Scott Rogers the stunt coordinator that that was there running it was you know he's phenomenal and the team was phenomenal and i think we've created a a, a truly iconic stunt you know especially using Keanu and Kerry Ann to do the gag it's a, it's pretty unique and special i really enjoy the filmmaking process over the years of of working in you know in stunts and rigging you you get a real good feeling for how things can be filmed how things can be shot it's just a natural progression where you, you you kind of create something and then you you usually in that process of creating you're envisaging how it would how it would look on camera and and that sort of image that you get in your mind is usually you know the best way to cover something so you know for me it's just a natural progression to go well you know i know i know action really well i know the rigging stuff you know particularly well so if, it's a you know it's a natural progression for me to go well I'd like to take it one step further and you know the action that we design uh it's nice to shoot it and see the result and and then you know from that you know now I'm writing a lot which is really cool and 
and uh, to be able to sort of envisage something, write it, and then take it from the written page to a live action sequence is satisfying. So it's kind of, you know, I like it and I'd like to keep doing more of it. And that's, that's where I'm heading. Recently, I uh, just finished working with Ron Howard on a film called 13 Lives, which was uh, about the story of the soccer team and the coach that was stuck in the cave in, in Thailand a couple of years back. We finished that a few months ago. I'm super excited to have worked on that, especially working with Ron Howard. Uh, as a main unit stunt coordinator on that. So I you know, basically spent four months with a guy that I've idolised since watching him on Happy Days, you know, so uh, that, that was fairly cool. I think the film's going to be brilliant. Ron Howard's, you know, he, he knocked it out of the park as he does with everything. And and to work on that was, again, a different genre of film, working in caves underwater with diving and confined spaces. So, you know, it's nice to experience something completely different to the normal, which is, you know, jumping people off buildings or driving cars or whatever it tends to be. So that was a that was a really cool experience. And I look forward to seeing it. I think it's going to be fantastic. <laughs>